the secretary to President Nana Akufuado of Ghana, Nana Asante Bedatuo, has announced that the anti-LGBTQ bill passed by Parliament in February should not be transmitted to President Akufuado for assent until two legal challenges against it are settled. Recall that lawmakers unanimously passed legislation that would intensify a crackdown on the rights of LGBTQ people and those accused of promoting lesbian, gay, or other minority sexual or gender identities in the country. Also, the Finance Ministry says the bill could jeopardize the $3.8 billion in World Bank financing for Ghana over the next five to six years if it becomes law, derailing a $3 billion IMF loan package. Nana Asante Bediatwo, in the letter to the clerk of the nation's parliament, said it was improper for the president's office to receive the bill as required by law until the Supreme Court rules on challenges against it. Now, there are reports that Ghana's Attorney General and Minister of Justice has also advised the president not to act on the bill they described as one of the harshest of its kind in Africa. Now, let's get more insights as we bring in security policy expert Anthony uh, Akwaye. He joins us from Akwa, Accra, Ghana, I beg your pardon. Good morning, Anthony. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I mean, first of all, you know, we definitely will talk about the LGBTQ bill, but I, I noticed the um, IMF loan aspect of it. And I, I want to know if you feel a certain type of way about that, you know, that Ghana may not be able to make policies, regardless of whichever one it is, that the country feels best suited because of loans that it might get from the, from the West and from the IMF. Yes, um, obviously, um, I am an issue with regard to anti-LGBTQ. It's a very serious and critical issue of factors that has made me to the fact that either to ascend the bill into law or not. So strategically, the government in its own cabinet ministers are trying as much as possible to look at the strategical way of handling this whole situation. Obviously, you know, as a country, if you look at the economic insecurity that we are facing, there are a lot of things that must go into um, putting the country back to its, you know, track record in terms of economic achievement. And so looking at the point that we have got into with respect to anti-LGBTQ, and then with our economic insecurity crisis. This is a very critical moment that we are as a country. And I think that it must be handled with care. But do we have any update currently on the position, you know, where, how far? Because there are reports that the um, IMF chief has sort of evaded the question regarding um, access to funding for Ghana as a result of the potential passage of the um, anti-LGBTQ law. So do we have updates on that at, at the moment, on this particular IMF fund? I think about two weeks ago, there was a news from the presidency that the IMS is ready to, you know, to release the money. But like I said, all boiled down to do with this whole issue or the point that we got into, as in whether the bill is going to be assent into law or not. This is the position we find ourselves. We are all looking up to the presidency with regard to how best they can handle the issue because the promise that we had last two weeks ago was that the IMF is ready to release the money. Okay, now away from the IMF, you know, and those um, aspects, we might come back to it because, you know, my worry really is that the country seems, because of its eco eco current economic challenges, you know, it seems to be pushed to the wall and, you know, would, you know, basically change its own rules, might even have to change its policies, change its constitution, you know, because it, it needs money from the IMF, which is not a good place to be. You know, if, if we're having a conversation that wasn't even an LGBTQ conversation, it, Ghana is still in a tight spot. It can't make its own laws, can't make rules for itself because, well, it needs to get money from the IMF. So let, let's talk about, you know, the LGBTQ law itself. You know, can you share details, you know, of this law and why it has become a major conversation. What, what do Ghanaians really feel about the LGBTQ community? Yes, um, 
when 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 you look at the dynamics of Ghanaian society, looking at it from the chieftaincy, looking at it from the Christian background, looking at it from the Muslim background, this is a country that do not, you know, believe in gay or lesbianism. And uh, the fact that there have been a lot of, you know, issues being challenged with regard to some articles within our constitution. Generally, I can tell you for a fact that if you look at the system of people within the country, Christians are of major, you know, majority compared to other tribe or other religion. And all the religions that you can find in the country, all of them, I can tell you for a fact that they are sponsors of this bill. And all we are looking up to is that, unfortunately for us as a country, where we find ourselves, majority of Ghanaians wish that this bill would be assent into law. Just opposing it with the issues of economic situation that we find ourselves, where as a country, we need to also look at the outside world, how best they can support us to be on our feet in terms of our economic security. This has been one major issue of concern. Currently, as you rightly said, the bill currently has been passed by the parliament. And now there's a conflict between parliament and the executive. In that, after the bill was passed at parliament, it was just to be transmitted to the presidency for the president to assign into law. Unfortunately for us, per the strate strategic, you know, tactical play by the government, certain group of people who are very known to closely to the governing party have challenged their constitutionality of the bill, which the president, based on that court challenge, had to use that as a yastic not to assign the bill to law. That has been the situation that we find ourselves in as a, as, yeah. as a country. Let me, let me be, be um, sure what you said. You know, you said Ghana, Ghana is a Christian country and some of the people who are pushing the bill are Christians. Is, is that where it's coming from? The Christian faith? Yeah, the authors of the bill are Christians, Muslims, tradition, group of people. These okay. are the sponsors of the, the bill. Through the use of the parliamentary, you know, um, representative in all the various 275 constituencies. And mind you, this bill was pushed using, you know, a bipartisan approach. And so, and so you know, what, what that means and what you're saying is that Ghanaians generally are saying no to lesbians, gay, bisexual, you know, the whole, you know, LGBT community. They are not welcome in Ghana. Is that what you're saying? You, do you think that there may be some Ghanaians that, that think otherwise? Those who think otherwise are negligible or insignificant. All right. Uh, let's talk about why President Nana Kufuadu has delayed on, you know, delayed with regards to sent into the bill. Um, some a while back, we came across an interview he granted where he did say that the LGBT law supporting LGBTQ will not be passed in his time in office, or something you know within that line. But uh, why is he delaying? Because if majority of Ghanaians seem to be in support of the bill, one would assume that the president would automatically be in line with that as well. Yes, the factors may be money, but then let's look at the risk factors leading to 2024 election. As you rightly know, in any election, there are what we call foreign influence. And we have some few months to the election. Obviously, we are all aware that the LGBTQ community, uh, such community that when it comes to issue of money, that is not a problem to them. And so there's a tactical play here. The major opposition, you know, flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, has stated clear that he is not in support of the LGBTQ, you know, activity within the country, as he called himself as an Assemblies of God, you know, 
um, member. Here is the yeah, case man, that the, the, the problem with that, unfortunately, we need to go. But the problem with that is, you know, I mean, your religious beliefs shouldn't dictate how I live my life. I'm not, you know, a member of, you know, the Assemblies of God, you know, of church. I think that's the church we're about to name. Neither if I choose to be a non-practicing, you know, um, a mem a religious, you know, you know, member of the public. I mean, why should your religion dictate how I live my life? Yeah, I think he spoke, you know, basically with regard to the majority of Ghanaians, you know, ascending to the situation that they do not want to see anti-gay, you know, activity within the country. And for him, right. who had been a former president and intending to be a president, he wants to talk to the majority side of what Ghanaians are saying. But like I said, right. this anti-gay issue has a serious risk on our election come 2024. So what it means is that if the governing party, the president, who is currently, you know, the leader of the nation, does not ascend to the bill to be law, Obviously, there might be some empathy or sympathy from the community to support them when it comes to monetary issues to, you know, to win the election. That is one critical issue we must also look at. All right. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting conversation, you know, and it's not just in Ghana. I think in Rwanda we had, or Uganda, I believe, we had, you know, pretty much uh, the same conversation about a year ago. Um, we'll see how this turns out, you know, if the Ghanaian president will go ahead to ascend to the bill or maybe wouldn't. And we'd like to uh, speak with you again as uh, this uh, story develops. Thanks for your time this morning. Very grateful. All right.